It was a moment on the House floor that took America back to the historic sit-ins of the civil rights era, but this was a much different issue, a debate over gun control in America. Democrats led by civil rights icon uh, John Lewis occupied the House floor for some 26 hours, demanding a vote on gun legislation. Uh, it sit-in ended just a short time ago. Uh, Congressman Lewis tweeted during the sit-in, and I quote, from Newtown to Charleston, how long will it take for Congress to act? It is a sentiment held by many in the great city of Charleston, South Carolina, a year after a gunman slipped into a side door at the Mother Emanuel AME Church. And I went back to the city recently and I talked to the people who were left to pick up the pieces. Confirmed it is a suspect from the Charleston shooting. A white male, early 20s, with a bold haircut. 30 minutes ago, he was arrested in Shelby, North Carolina. Roof was traveling with a Glock semi-automatic handgun in the back seat. A 14-hour manhunt led to the capture of Dylan Roof. On the night of June 17th last year, he walked into a historically black church, pulled out a handgun, and killed nine people as they closed their eyes in prayer. You're the police chief in the city. How did you all even know who you were looking for or what, what you were looking for for the next 14 hours? A very alert citizen who had watched the TV uh, news was able to spot the car. Police released this security camera footage of the gunman entering the side door of Mother Emanuel AME Church, eliciting help from the public to catch him on the run. There were some anxious moments as we were waiting for confirmation that they actually had him in custody because anybody who would certainly commit this type of a crime, you never know what they were gonna do. CNN was given rare access inside the Bible study room where the shooter sat among a dozen church members for an hour before eventually targeting them in his rampage because of the color of their skin. I spoke exclusively to those left behind. There was no doubt in my mind that it was a hate crime. He was not insane. He was a racist bigot. He came here because he hated black people and he wanted to cause a race revolution. Forty years ago, Joseph Riley was elected mayor of the city of Charleston. I spoke with him on his last day in office. I ran for mayor to build bridges between the African-American and white community. What was so extra, doubly tragic about the 17th of June was that I was, of course, a bigot who lived 120 miles away. If he were sitting here, is there anything you would ask of him or say to him? I would ask him why. You would? Mm -hmm. And ask him to pray for God's forgiveness. Repent, and God will for forgive him. It doesn't mean you don't have to pay for your sins, but he will forgive him. Just before the madman ran out of the room, police say he stood over a witness and uttered a racial slur. He then told Polly Shepard he would let her live to tell the story of what happened that night. But Polly says it wasn't Roof, but God who left her here. My memory is, um, it comes and goes. Of that night? Anything is delayed, I can put clothes in the washing machine and forget them two days later, I'll remember. And by that time, they'll have to be washed all over again. What did you do with the clothes you wore that night? Did you hold on to them? I have them. Did you wash them? I washed them. Why have you held on to them? Well, I plan to wear them again, for one thing. You have killed some of the most beautiful people that I know. Every fiber in my body hurts. Federal prosecutors will seek the death penalty against Roof and his trial set to begin in November. 
but he's already faced the families of his victims in court. A stunning scene just 48 hours after the massacre. You hurt me. You hurt a lot of people. But God forgive you. And I forgive you. In a few days, those heartbroken family members stood up at a bond hearing and told that hateful man they forgave him. You know, that was unscripted, unexpected. It, it, it was amazing. How long did it take you to forgive? About two or three weeks. I sat home and I thought about all these people who lost family members. I didn't lose any family members. I forgive them. Hate affects you. You have to turn it loose. It, it affects you. If you don't turn it loose, then, then he's, he's won. For some, forgiveness doesn't come easy. Esther Lance's mother was murdered that night. You talk about having a little hate in, hate mm -hmm. in your heart. Yeah. Do you still have the hate in your heart? Before I can forgive her, I got to heal all of it. Because right now I'm not healing. Because you took my mama. Roof has pleaded not guilty to 33 federal offenses, including hate crime and firearms charges. I can't forgive him for this right now. My heart ain't there. Do you think if it were to come to the death penalty, would you want to see him put yeah. to death? Yes. Yes. Before you retired, were a nurse in that detention center. Yes. Where he's being held. Uh huh. So had you not retired, you could be tending to this man. And I would. You would? He would get the best care I could give him. How would you find the grace in your heart to do that? You, you, you can't fight evil with evil. Love overcomes everything. What's your message to folks who are struggling with this? The rhetoric is so full of hate right now. If Congress didn't do anything when they killed those children at Sandy Hook, they're not going to do anything now. Um, what does anyone need with a gun that shoot 10 to 18 rounds at one time? We need gun control. Too many mass killings back to back. We can do better. This is America. At what point did you feel it? I am the community caretaker. That's my role. I accept that. I was just hoping that, that I wouldn't do anything that would make it worse. From the very beginning, it was, it was very personal, and I still feel it every day.